talked about efficiency versus money and hours versus your time and money. This week, what I wanted to talk about was your customer base. Let's go. All right guys, welcome back inside the shop for another video. Yesterday, end of February, was 56 degrees outside, sunny, no snow to be seen. Today, 15 degrees outside, and my alley looks like this. Anyway, I wanted to bring you guys back for another discussion video. So what we're gonna be talking about today is the challenges you'll run into with customers when running a small shop, or to word it differently, a small business. So let's get right into it. All right, so last week we talked about running your small business as how it looks versus working at a dealership or a big company, right? And we talked about efficiency versus money and hours versus your time and money. This week, what I wanted to talk about was your customer base. Without your customers, obviously you have no business, but there is a huge problem when you are a small shop. Like for us, one man show, this is, this is exactly what you get. And what you run into, I think, is if you're running a successful business, a lot of your business is word of mouth. Me personally, I like taking the time to explain to my customers like, this is why we have to do this to your car or this is why this failed and it snowballs, right? People start telling people, they tell their people, they tell their friends, cousins, sisters, mother-in-law and all of a sudden you have all of this foot traffic coming in the door from word of mouth. Well, if you're a small shop, the majority of people like supporting small businesses but with that, here's what I have personally dealt with. So. Customers think if they know in the back of their head that you're a small shop, you're a one-man show, you're a small business, that you are going to completely cater to them. If you go to the dealership, you're not going to tell them how the dealership is run. They're going to tell you and people most often do not like that. They like this power balance to be where they have just a little bit more than the other guy. And I'm not trying to paint your customers in a negative light. Customers, without them again, you wouldn't have a business. But from my experience, what happens is they think that you are going to bend over backwards to cater to them. Not all of them. I am very grateful that the majority of my customer base has been absolutely fantastic. I don't know what I would do without them. I've said it before in other videos, but if I wasn't able to do what we're doing right here, I wouldn't be wrenching on cars anymore because I'll be damned if I go back and work for another dealership again or a big company. I don't even honestly know if I'd be very good at going back to work for somebody else. We're going into our third year of business and running your own business is fantastic. There's trade-offs we talked about last week, but going back to the customers, what I mean by this is people think, oh, he's a one-man show. He really wants the business. And so I get texts all the time like, hey, can I come by Sunday? No, shop's closed on Sunday, I'm sorry. And these people, I've actually had people argue with me and be like, you're not gonna work with me? And it's like, well, it's not that I don't wanna help you. I'd be more than happy to service your vehicle or address these issues that you're having, but just because it's a small business doesn't mean that I can't afford to not have you. I have a friend that has been monumentally helpful with me starting this whole business in a lot of ways. I don't know where I would be without him. If you're watching this and I know you are, you know exactly who you are. And this guy's helped me so much throughout the last couple of years that I honestly don't know how I could ever repay him. But he told me something a couple of years ago and he said, well, you're weeding the garden right now. And I was like, I don't even know what that means. And he's like, you're weeding the garden in the sense that you're gonna have when you start out no customer base, right? So you're gonna work on anybody who comes in the door, you're gonna be glad that you have business, but you're gonna learn very quickly. You're gonna grow flowers and you're gonna grow weeds. And I just, it amazes me the amount of calls and texts and messages on the business page that I get and people will be like, I needed this done yesterday. I don't care that it's 10 o'clock on a Saturday night. Can you work on my car? And just one instance I had last week, 
I got a message from someone on a Wednesday. They didn't respond to me till Friday. Then on Saturday, they messaged me again and they said, well, do you have any availability tomorrow? And I said, no, tomorrow is Sunday, the shop's closed. The soonest I can get you in is, I believe it was Tuesday. And they're like, well, I have this to do on Monday. And I was like, well, I'm sorry, like just because you can't get your car, it must not be that important because you would have planned for this, right? So I'm not, again, trying to paint customers in a negative light, but you can't just assume because someone is a small operation that they're gonna drop everything that they're doing and cater to you, right? I have a business to run, but I also have a life. And if you've ever owned a small business, even if it's part-time, you realize how much work it is and how much time that you spend trying to build your business up. You know, if you're gonna be successful, this isn't a nine to five job. This is, I'm gonna work until the work is done. I've been here plenty of days on Saturdays and Sundays catching up on stuff, but I'm not going to bend over backwards to cater to somebody that doesn't have any communication skills or cannot reason with me. I had someone, I told them no three times. I will not be there on Sunday, I'm going out of town. And the response I got was just, I couldn't even believe it. The response I got was, so you're not willing to work with me? And I just didn't even respond. And again, I want to provide a really good customer experience, but it doesn't mean that I'm gonna bend over backwards and inconvenience the rest of my life and my customers that actually have the courtesy to keep me in the loop and plan ahead. I'm not gonna do that just because I'm a small business and you think you can strong arm me. It's just, it's something that you get better at dealing with and you're gonna get a thick skin and you have to have a thick skin or you're just gonna completely crumble. You will not make it, I don't care if it's a shop, you will not make it as a business owner if you do not have a thick skin. But back to the saying, so you're gonna weed the garden, right? And he said that you're gonna weed the garden for about five years and after that, all you're gonna grow is flowers. And he even said to me that his customers, he's like, they don't even ask me what stuff's gonna cost anymore. They drop their vehicle off, they say call me when it gets done. They don't question anything, they trust him and he's built up that reputation and that has to be earned. If you're a brand new business, you haven't earned that yet. You could be the best, most honest person in the world. You need to earn that with your customers. But on the flip side of it, I think you just have to be careful that you're not getting strong armed into situations that are actually gonna be detrimental to your business. I love working. I work way more than 40 hours a week. I love being in my shop, I love what I do. But at a certain point, you're gonna burn yourself out not only on hours, but also just mentally by dealing with this kind of thing. You went out on your own for a reason, and that was to be your own boss and to be have the freedom of being self-employed and to know that you're giving a good service. So don't let anybody take that away from you because if you start catering to all these people, they're gonna tell other people and then that snowball effect happens. All of a sudden you've got more weeds in your garden than you do flowers. And guess what? Weeds don't pay the bills. Because most of the time, the people that are that inconsiderate and are not going to respect your time and respect that you have a life outside of your job, they're not the ones who are going to be bringing you the good jobs anyway. They're the ones who have already called five, six, seven shops and are shopping around for the best deal and haven't been able to strong arm anyone else, so why don't we try with you? Again, this isn't a rant saying that customers are bad. I love my customers, I appreciate all of them, but these are lessons you have to learn if you're gonna run your own business. So that's all I had for you guys today in this discussion video. I hope you enjoyed. Again, just to say it one more time and not to be a broken record or anything, but I love my customers and I really appreciate my good customers. You just have to find that balance and make sure that you're building something that you're able to maintain and follow through with. If you let people step all over you and take advantage of you, you're not gonna make any money. One more word of advice from my same friend is profit isn't a dirty word. You're providing a service and your skills and your knowledge and your time, which is the most important thing that you have in turn for compensation. So don't let people step all over you because I guarantee you before you know it, you won't even have a business to run. If you guys enjoyed this video, please drop me a comment down below. Like and subscribe if you have not already. And as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.